In this volume of the training video film module, we will discuss the assembly of the power pack. Before starting the assembly of power pack, clean the liner sleeve properly. After having cleaned the liner sleeve, Measure the internal diameter of the sleeve crosswise with an inside micrometer. Now check the outer diameter of the liner crosswise with an outside micrometer. Ensure that the interference between the internal diameter of the sleeve and the outer diameter of the liner is between 0.0005 inches to 0.0015 inches. After having checked the interference, lap the liner seat with emery paste and the lapping tool, like this. Now fit the top silicone o-ring and both the bottom whiten o-rings. Before using any rubber component, ensure that its shelf life has not yet finished. While fitment of the liner, always remember that this cut mark of the liner is placed opposite to the jumper pipe. Also while placing the liner, always ensure that the FIP marked portion of the liner is facing towards the camshaft side and is in front of you. Now place the liner slowly inside the liner sleeve. and press the liner with the jack. Similarly, place all the other liners of the power bank. After having placed the liner, now check the internal size of the liner crosswise at top, middle 
and the bottom position for ovality. Ensure that the liner size is between 2 to 8.60 mm to 2 to 8.70 mm. If this is not so, then replace the liner while maintaining the interference between the liner and the sleeve. Now coat the piston and the piston rings with the lubricating oil. Set the piston rings. While setting the piston rings, remember Always keep the top compression ring butt clearance facing towards your side, which means towards the technician. Then set the other rings 120 degrees apart. After setting the piston rings, clamp the piston with the lifting shackle. And place the piston ring guide sleeve on the liner. Now place the piston and the connecting rod assembly very carefully inside the liner. While placing the piston, ensure that the setting of the piston rings does not get disturbed. Also remember that while fitting the piston, the crank pin must be at 45 degrees angle. Also, Ensure that the locking tab in the connecting rod shell fits into the slot provided for it. The upper shell is identified by the partial oil groove, whereas the lower shell has full groove. Now remove the piston ring guide sleeve and the lifting shackle. of 0.015 inches to 0.018 inches. 
After the elongation of the nut is complete, check the special nut assembly groove and the bolt hole. Both of them must be in alignment. Now fit the split pin and bend it as is being shown. Similarly fit all the pistons and the connecting rod assemblies of the power bank. Carry out the checking of vibration damper. In order to check the vibration damper, unseal the nut of the overspeed trip assembly first. Then remove the overspeed trip assembly or the OSTA. Then take out the side plate of the vibration damper. Now open the nuts of the weight and remove the weight. Remove the vibration damper and clean its sealing plate. Ensure that no rubbing mark is found on the vibration damper hole. Similarly, there must be no rubbing mark on the camshaft hole. Now fit the vibration damper. Ensure that no excessive play is found between the male and the female portion of the vibration damper. Now fit the OSTA weight and ensure that no excessive clearance is present between the weight and the vibration damper hole. After this, put the lock plate and torque the special nut. After torquing the nut, seal these nuts with the wire as is being shown here. Now put the overhauled overspeed trip assembly. Ensure that the overspeed trip collar does not rub with the fuel control shaft collar. Replace or reground the camshaft. Now remove the camshaft gear cover. Then clean and check the cam gear and split gear for pitting, scuffing, fatigue, breakage or any severe damage on the teeth surface.
Then check the cam gear backlash with the dial gauge. Ensure that the reading of the cam gear backlash must be within 9 to 18 thou. Then locate the TDC. While locating the TDC, ensure that the punch marking on the cam gear teeth is parallel to the block and R1 piston must be on the TDC. Check the TDC with the dial gauge and the travel gauge. Then first tighten the camshaft joint bolts with the spanner and then torque them at 85 to 90 foot pounds. Now check the camshaft thrust. For this, fit the magnetic base dial gauge on the block. Set the zero reading on the gauge. Now press the cam gear by the cranking rod. At the time of overhaul, the camshaft thrust limit is within 0.006 inches to 0.012 inches and the service limit is 0.022 inches. Similarly, attend the camshaft on the opposite side. Now, carry out the checking of the crankshaft thrust. For this, fit the dial gauge on the crankshaft weight number 9. Set the zero reading. Now slide the crankshaft with the cranking bar in forward and reverse direction. Note both the readings. At the time of overhaul, the crankshaft thrust limit is within 0.010 inches to 0.017 inches and the service limit is 0.035 inches. After this, check the play of crankshaft vibration damper. After having checked the crankshaft thrust, now start the checking of traction generator deflection. In order to measure the traction generator deflection, fit the deflection gauge on the mark over the crankshaft web on the crankshaft counterweight number 8 and set the zero reading. Now rotate the crankshaft with the flywheel. While rotating the crankshaft, ensure that the deflection gauge does not touch the connecting rod. Then rotate the crankshaft in the reverse direction. While rotating the crankshaft, ensure that the deflection gauge does not touch the connecting rod. Note the readings. Ensure that the traction generator deflection reading is within 0 to plus minus 0.0008 inches. After these examinations are complete, now tap the air inlet elbow hole of the engine block. Then fit the air inlet elbow and the exhaust manifold on the engine block.
Also, tap the water jumper pipe bolt holes on the engine block. After this, tap the banjo bolt holes of the main fuel header. Also tap all the holes of the FIP support on the engine block. Then fit the double of the FIP support. This brings us to the end of Volume 2. The next and the last volume, that is Volume 3, continues with the assembly of the power pack.